A-level chemistry is one of the hardest A-levels out there. I was traumatized enough as it is through GCSE chemistry. You'll be stretched conceptually, but even more in the application of these already difficult concepts. With these tips, however, I'm gonna show you some ways which you can definitely get an A or even an A star, because I myself using these tips went from a C at the beginning of year 12 to an A, knocking on the door of an A star by the end of the year 13. So let's get into it. Hey guys, my name's Sunny. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, good to see you. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to achieve an A to an A star in A-level chemistry. Make sure you look in the description below and you browse through the timestamps and jump around in the video to bits which you find interesting or feel like will be helpful to you. Tip number one will be to go hard in year 12. Like honestly, go hard. The beautiful thing about chemistry is that it's one of the few A-levels who actually build on the foundational knowledge of year 12. Like they overlap so heavily and year 13 is hard. The concepts get harder and so do the questions. And so having a solid foundation from year 12 makes year 13 that much easier. My second tip, make the revision guide on screen right now your best friend. This revision guide will save you so much time. It's simple, it's concise, and the explanations and examples in there, amazing. I recommended this revision guide to almost everybody who ever asked me anything about chemistry because this was literally my crutch. This revision guide explained anything and everything which I didn't understand and honestly without it my like revision schedule or my learning process wouldn't have worked as well as it did. So definitely get yourselves one of these. You can probably borrow it from your college library and so there's no need to buy it, although it is a great resource. So I'd probably recommend you do if you needed to. Tip number three, get yourself YouTube teachers. Why limit yourself to only two teachers from your college when you usually have YouTube where you can find a plethora of great chemistry teachers who actually fit your learning style a bit better? This is exactly what I did. My chemistry teachers were already great at college, but I found two or three YouTubers I'll pop them up on screen now and I'll have the links to their channels in the description who really helped me revise and answer questions which weren't which I couldn't ask my teachers in the moment whilst I was at home or in the library and their way of explaining things visually and walking your, walking you yourself a one-to-one -one, um, on a one-to-one -one level through a question which you're struggling with or a concept which you're struggling with or a topic which you're struggling with is so useful. I couldn't recommend it highly enough. If you took nothing from this video apart from one point, this would be the point. Find yourself YouTubers who are great at explaining chemistry and definitely check out the one that I use in the description. Tip number four, know your formulas. You actually have no excuse to not know your formulas. We get given a list of formulas on our sheet which holds our periodic tables as well but there are some formulas which aren't there and which you use so frequently but some people still don't know them for example the equation for finding ph i couldn't tell you off the top of my head right now but i remember as one of those ones which i was like oh what's that again what's that again and then you'll get it wrong or you'll get it the wrong way around and then you're ruined and you just lost three marks simply because you didn't know an equation like imagine it, three marks just because you don't know an equation, you lose it. That doesn't make sense. So I'd recommend you make a flashcard deck full of the equations which aren't going to be on your sheet and you just learn them. You just go through them once a week and you'll definitely know all your equations and you'll be fine. You'll be collecting marks left, right and center. Perfect. Tip number five, do not lose three marks in definitions, colors and properties and conditions actually. Those four things are literally simply recall. Chemistry being such a conceptually complex subject has a lot of marks in its problem solving of uh, questions which you have to go through multi-step calculations and 
going through organic pathways. And so when there's an opportunity where marks are available for discrete recall, it's honestly a mess if you don't know the answer because it's simple. All you need to do is memorize it. Those are free marks, honestly. All you need to do is remember them. You don't even need to be smart to remember them. You can just, just remember them. So make a flashcard deck of all the definitions you need, all the colors you need, all the properties, all the conditions, and just make sure you know them off by heart. So then you see that one marker, boom, you got it. Because in chemistry, the grade boundaries are high. Make sure you're not losing marks where it's silly to and you're just grabbing as many as you can. And that will definitely get you your A to A star because there are a lot of people who don't know their definitions. And so they lose three or two marks just like that. There are a lot of people who don't know their colors. They just lose two or three marks just like that. But yeah, colors, properties, conditions, was the last one, and definitions. Make sure you learn them. Now, we're gonna be moving on to some organic chemistry specific advice here. And the first one is to how you're gonna learn your pathways. And this is referring to the big map of um, chemical reactions, which you'll get in year 13. But this can also apply to the smaller map or maps, which you get in year 12. You're gonna get this map, put it on a PowerPoint, and then you're gonna cover up using just shape squares you're going to cover up each name, each condition, each reactant, and then you're going to get a timer and you're going to press go on that timer and you're going to call out what is underneath one of the squares and then remove it one at a time. If you get it wrong, look underneath it, put it back and then go to a different one. And you're going to rinse and repeat this process until you've removed all the squares from everything on the map. And what this will do is it's incorporating active recall with spatial memory. And so eventually what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to know exactly what goes where and what it is underneath each square. I would do this exercise at least once a day and just try to beat my high score of my time from the day before until I whittled it down to about two minutes or a minute. I think it was two minutes though. But yeah, you just keep going and you will get faster. There's no doubt about it. And eventually this map will actually be imprinted in your head and any organic chemistry question relating to this massive workflow on how to get from one end to the other, you'll be able to reel it off just like that. And honestly, it was the best thing I did and it cured my hate for organic chemistry so quickly. My last tip, and I lied actually, the YouTube, the YouTube tip is actually tip most important number two this is tip most important number one practice papers and practice questions i actually could not tell you how many past papers i did in chemistry because i lost count i could not tell you how many worksheets i did in chemistry because i lost count i would do so many practice papers and so many practice questions because chemistry is heavy on maths and so you can't memorize the maps. You can memorize the discrete facts that we talked about before in definitions, colors, um, properties and conditions, but you can't memorize the maps. You can learn the technique, but the practice of being accurate with your calculator or the practice of the technique to do this calculation only comes from seeing it multiple times and doing it over and over again, which you'll have to do in practice papers. And the beauty of practice papers is, is that it varies the difficulty. It varies it a lot. Sometimes the questions on titrations are the hardest questions in the paper, but sometimes the balancing questions are the hardest questions on the paper. And you can only experience that range of difficulty through going through a lot of practice papers. And this is actually the number one way which I would suggest on how to get better at chemistry, just through exposure. You get better at something by doing it more often. So you will become better at sitting chemistry exams by sitting chemistry exams more often. And so this is honestly the key of any exam actually, but I'd say particularly chemistry on how to increase your grade. So definitely go through as many past paper questions as you can. And the good thing about my college is that they gave us these chunky massive packs. I'll see if I have any pictures of mine because I've definitely thrown them out by now, but any pictures on my camera roll and I'll show you exactly how many there were in one pack and how many I had done, but I'm sure I didn't take pictures of all of them. But yeah, my friends will even tell you if they saw me doing chemistry, I was doing a past paper or marking it. And 
it works. It definitely works. One last bonus tip, which I actually just thought of. If you're really struggling on a topic and you want to start nailing the questions, what you actually should do is go to Physics and Maths Tutor. I'll have a link to this revision resource down in the description. You go to A-Levels and then you go to Chemistry and then you choose your exam board and then you choose the topic which you're struggling on. For example, acids and bases. And then you print off all their booklets of questions or maybe just one just start with one print off one of their questions for acids and bases and then you have a booklet just with that theme style of question and then you grab your revision resource on the side or the revision guide which i mentioned earlier my favorite book in the world and then you go through acids and bases on in the revision guide and then you go straight into the question and what this does is that you get a high repetition rate of the styles of questions which you're struggling with because in a past paper in a past paper there won't be that many um, acids and base questions but in this pack where it's specifically acids and bases you can go through just acids and base questions and practice exactly what you're not really getting and added benefit is that you can see the mark scheme you can see exactly where you went wrong and this is exactly what I did during organic chemistry. I can remember it. It was aldehydes. Aldehydes I was struggling with. And so what I did was I printed off like two or three booklets just of aldehyde questions. And I spent a day going through them. At the end of the day, I'm so comfortable with aldehydes. So yeah, that definitely worked for me. Chemistry was definitely my favorite subject. It was definitely the hardest subject by far the difficulty ceiling in chemistry is crazy and although i was gutted i didn't manage to get an a star because i generally thought i was so close i'm um, i'm not surprised because yeah that subject is crazy i'm pretty sure the boundary was about 86 percent to get an a star and when you think in biology it's something like a third or sorry two thirds or maybe even just about 70 percent for chemistry to be 86 percent that is nuts absolutely crazy and I loved my teachers they were great and I loved my classmates they just made it even better I think yeah chemistry was the subject I fell asleep the least in and that's saying something honestly so engaging and so rewarding for being in a subject that's so difficult and seeing progress it just makes well it made me want to just get better at it and yeah definitely had a great two years studying chemistry, even though it was definitely the hardest subject I've done and very interesting to see what medicine is gonna be like in comparison. But definitely using this tip, using these tips, I don't understand why anybody can't get at least an A. An A star is definitely reserved for different kind of people, like people who are just built different, but an A, definitely achievable. I think you guys can do it. So yeah, follow the tips. Make sure you use your teachers as well. But all of these tips, they're great. So get onto it, guys. Thank you for watching. Like the video if you liked it. Any questions, drop it in the comments. And I'll see you next week. Peace.